you guys pray that everybody is doing well on tonight this fine Tuesday evening oh, I want to welcome you guys to uh, Vital Church's uh, Bible study online interactive Bible study uh, thank you guys so much for joining us on tonight um, if you can, uh, if you have not, uh, please be sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, like, if you would please, and share uh, share this uh, stream uh, with your reach. If anybody that you know might need a good good Bible study. Amen. I want to remind you guys that. Uh, we are live and interactive, so uh, any of your comments, uh, questions, uh, please uh, be sure to drop them in uh, the the chat. Turn this music down. So, all right. So blessings again to everyone. Thank you so much for uh, joining us on tonight. Uh, I thank and bless God for. Uh, each and every one of you. Uh, if you can hear me, uh, go ahead and 
uh, say hello in the chat let me know uh, that you're with me let me know that you're able to you're able to hear me amen and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into our Bible study just a moment again thank you thank you thank you thank you to everyone uh, who has tuned in again go ahead and uh, if you have not subscribed uh, like and share this stream amen subscribe like and share uh, this stream so we can let others know uh, that uh that we're live for our Bible study. We're just waiting on the YouTube algorithm to catch up and to let all of the subscribers know that we are live. Amen. If you're with me, go ahead and go ahead and say hello. Uh, if you're with me, let me know know that you're out there, that you're out here. Yeah, it's good to see. Good to see that we have some individuals uh, with us on tonight. We pray that the blessings of the Lord uh, be upon you and remain upon you. All right. I see that our, our number is going up, so the uh, the YouTube algorithm is uh, is kicking in. It is kicking in, and while that is kicking in, I am doing uh, doing what I need to do to get the broadcast out there. So, you guys, uh, just bear with us. Getting everything's together for everyone awesome there we go hey man again it is good to see you on tonight thank you so much for being with us hey man all right we're gonna go ahead and get started hey man how many are ready for the bible study if you're ready for the bible study go ahead and uh go ahead and say amen uh in the chat Go ahead and drop drop an amen in the chat uh, say hello let me know that you're here I see that you're here amen amen God bless you overcomer truth true faith through faith thank you so much God bless you uh, God bless you God bless you God bless you hey uh, if you have not again go ahead and subscribe like and share we're gonna have we're gonna uh, get more into uh, this Bible study um, as we walk through the book of Genesis and uh, Genesis is very controversial can be very controversial hello hello amen thank you so much and it looks like sister Tawana amen God bless you sister Tawana thank you so much thank you so much amen so uh, giving the honor to God who is the head of my life. Amen. And I do honor uh, Pastor Demetria on tonight. Amen. She is certainly uh, deserving of uh, the honor, deserving of double honor. So um, I do I do honor her on tonight. Amen. God bless you, Sister Jill. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Amen. To God be the glory. Um Good to see you. Uh, I bless and thank God for each and every one of you in your uh, respectable places. Thank y'all so much for joining us. Uh, so again, we're going to continue going through the book of uh, Genesis. And uh, on tonight's study, we're going to take a look at um, we're going to take a look at life in life in the garden. All right. So we have a few things set up for us. So hopefully uh, everything works out 
uh, you guys know that I like to I like to uh, make sure we have the word in front of us and so guys just give me just give me one moment I'm having to do everything I'm wearing double hats all right got to got to teach the scripture and uh, also have to uh, run all of uh, run all the stream issues if you will uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Amen. all right all right I gotta, I gotta pull this chat up so I can see you guys amen to God be the glory amen so if you see me looking down or looking away amen it is uh it is because I'm re either reading the Bible or making sure we're good on the live stream and also checking uh, checking the chat so we can make sure this is interactive. Amen. God bless y'all again. Uh, if you have not again, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you're not, uh, like this video or dislike it if you don't like it, you know, or and uh, share the video. So subscribe like or dislike and make sure you share the video if you like it share it if you don't like it share it and say why you don't like it just share it all right <laughs> amen so again we're going to continue our bible study uh, 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 through the book of genesis and uh so last last week we looked at um uh the creation story and uh, we talked about uh, how uh, Moses uh, Moses is uh, contributed to or uh, attributed to writing the book of Genesis. And this is the moment in time when uh, the children of Israel, they are... Uh, in the wilderness, the wilderness Sinai. Uh, you guys uh, may have not heard the wilderness Sinai, but you heard of Mount Sinai. So uh, they're in this this area. They're in uh, this region to where uh, God is uh, taking them out of slavery, taking them out of bondage, uh, taking them from uh, being beneath, and uh, they are in transition to being above. And so I believe Moses was uh, encouraging the people uh, with this story, the story and, uh, of creation, letting them know that uh, they serve uh, the creator. They serve Father God. All right. And so if God did that, if God could uh, uh, put everything into existence, everything that they can see, touch, feel, taste, uh, if, 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 if they can do, if he can do all of that, then he can do the very thing uh, that he's promising uh, for them. And that's making them a holy people, a holy nation. Uh, God bless you. God bless you, Mr. Shirley. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you with us. Amen. So uh, here we have the story of creation. And already uh, some theological statements and proclamations were made. Uh, again, like in verse number one, in the beginning, God created. Right. That's very controversial even now uh, in, 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 in today's time that God created. And so we have uh, the Big Bang theorist. We have uh, uh, those individuals who uh, believe in evolution. But our Bible teaches us that uh, if there was a Big Bang, and maybe there was, uh, but if there was a Big Bang, God was behind the Big Bang. Uh, it is because when, 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 when God moves, uh, something miraculous happens. Uh, when God speaks, something miraculous happens. And you can even uh, uh, attest to that in your own life, that when God moved on your behalf, 
when God uh, 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 blessed you, uh, he took you from nothing and he made you something. He has made you a child of God. And so this is just a re recurring thing that we see all throughout humanity's history. God taking absolutely nothing and making something. All right. <laughs> so I can attest to that. I have that testimony. All right. And we're not we're not uh, necessarily talking about this physical realm, but spiritually, God has taken us from from nothing and he has made us into into something. He has given us power. He has given us authority. We we see that or we saw that with Adam, how he uh, formed Adam out of the dust of the ground form Adam out of nothing and uh, he, he he breathed life he breath, breathed the uh, the breath of God was breathed in Adam and Adam became a living spirit Adam became a living soul so this is a reoccurring theme and maybe that can be encouragement to you guys uh, on tonight as well that the God that you serve the God that you're serving uh, he is the he is the creator. Uh, he created us in uh, his own image. You were created in, in God's own image. And I just talked about last week how I wasn't trying to be sacrilegious, but it's just the truth of the matter. If you want to know uh, or get some type of idea of what God looks like, go look in the mirror. Because the Bible tells us that we were made in his likeness and in his image. All right. Uh, uh, we represent or we represent God here in the earth. Uh, he has given us power and authority and dominion. Uh, and we're going to see uh, again on tonight how he has blessed mankind uh, to be fruitful uh, and to multiply. I want you to know that on tonight uh, that God has decreed in the earth. God has decreed in existence that you shall be fruitful and you will multiply. Uh, and it's just very amazing uh, to me that uh, just some things to point out there is that when God created uh, the vegetation, when he created the, the, the trees, excuse me, when he created the trees and the herbs and things of that nature, he, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, its seed was found in it. It was created with the ability to produce. It was created with the ability to be fruitful and to multiply and I'm so glad that that's the type of God that I serve I'm so glad that that's the type of God who is on my side that when he created uh, Benny when he created uh, uh, sister Tawana when he created uh, sister Shirley when he created sister Jill he created you to produce. He created you to be fruitful and to multiply. It does not matter uh, what your life may look like now. Just know that God has decreed that you shall be fruitful and you shall multiply. And uh, again, so we're going to take a look uh, into uh, the uh, life in God's garden is the title uh, in, in, in the study um, Bible section but we won't solely uh, uh, rest there if you will but we're going to go through this and we're going to study the word of God you guys know how uh, how we do amen uh, again if you have any questions if you have any questions be sure uh, to uh, to drop it down in the chat Be sure to drop them down in in the chat. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, Genesis chapter number two, verse number eight. Again, uh, this is Moses talking. Uh, Moses says, "The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he plant and and there he put the man whom he had formed." Uh, again, we see where God. He created the whole earth. He created the whole universe, the whole uh, solar systems and everything. Uh, but God, he created the earth uh, to hold man. And more specifically, uh, now God has created a garden 
uh, in the eastern part of uh, Eden. And then he put he put the man there that he had formed. He put the man there that he had formed. All right. And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All right. So, again, we talked about that last week. We talked about how uh, the the diet that God first intended for us uh, was that of a vegetarian diet. All right. Uh, uh, meat or, or the animals had not been given uh, for food or they were not to eat uh, one another for food. We were uh, Adam and Eve. They weren't hunting. Uh, they weren't hunting the animals for food, but uh, what was given to them for food were were the trees or uh, you know the fruit trees, any type of vegetables, any type of herbs. Uh, that was the thing that was given to them, and uh, that that's a that's a really good example even now for us to to follow. Um, uh, you know, again, just getting back, just getting back as close as possible. Now, again, like I said last week, I'm not saying that there's anything, anything wrong with eating meat or anything like that. No, that's not what, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just making the observation that when God had formed man, the Bible tells us that uh, uh, he gave, he gave us uh, the trees to eat and the herbs and things of that nature and everything that had a seed. So it wasn't uh, seedless grapes or seedless watermelons or you know anything like that with GMOs, but uh, this was stuff you know straight from straight from the earth, all right, straight from the earth, all right. But the Bible is letting us know that the tree of life, the tree of life, the tree of life, the tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil uh, was also in the midst of this garden. Now, oftentimes when I think about um, when I think about uh, eternity and I think about well how is eternity going to be I can't help now this is just my opinion all right I can't I can't help but to think that it's going to be much like how it was in uh, in the garden all right and in, in, uh, in the garden and when we go back and or or if we skip forward and and we read the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, it also, it teaches us that the tree of life is going to be there in eternity. And we're actually going to eat of the tree of life and uh, and live forever, forever with God. Now, again, I'm not saying that we're going to be in a garden or anything like that, but I just can't help. My mind just can't help but go back to uh, uh, the beginning account when God first formed man and his, his first intentions uh, for man. So I often think about that. I, I often think about uh, how it was uh, in the garden. Uh, make sure. Hallelujah. So um, let's keep reading. And again, this is a very contextual uh, Bible study. However, we do want to uh, pull out principle and we do want to uh, be empowered first and encouraged. So uh, we will be going going through and pulling out uh, dif different principles that, that we see. Uh, verse number 10 says, Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it parted and became four river heads so there was one river one river in the garden to wa to water it and then from that river it split into four okay the name of the first is Pishon all right now watch this uh, it is the one which skirts the whole land of Havila and there and where excuse me so that, let's just start over. Uh, the name of the first is Pishon, and it is the one which skirts the whole land of Havila, where there is gold. And one thing that is very interesting, or very interesting to me, that Pishon uh, in the Hebrew means increase. Now we're going somewhere with this one tonight, but uh, 
this is one of the four river heads, right? And so in that garden, we see the river Pison. Now, this is the garden where God placed man. So God placed man in the midst uh, of a garden, in the midst of increase, in the midst of the river Pison, all right? And it skirted the whole land, and there was gold there. All right. I don't know about you, but I receive that, that God has put me in the midst of increase. If you believe that, you ought to say amen in the chat that you believe that God has placed you in the midst, in the midst of increase. Amen. You, do you see how a contextual study can still uh, provide blessing? <laughs> amen. Amen. All right. So verse number 12 says, and the gold of that land is what is good. Uh, Bedellium and the onyx stone are there. So it wasn't just gold, but it was uh, Bedellium. Excuse me. And onyx. Onyx was found there. Very precious stones, very precious metals. Uh, verse 13 says, the name of the second river is, I'm pronouncing it, uh, Gihon, or you may pronounce it Jihon. It is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. Now, uh, this word in the Hebrew, and uh, hopefully you guys can, let me see if I can get, get this to move. It doesn't want to move for me. That word in the Hebrew means bursting forth. Gihon means bur bursting forth. So now we have the river Pishon or Pison, which means increase. And now the river Gihon, uh, which means bursting forth. So you have increase bursting forth. Now, this is the place. Again, this is the place where God has placed man. All right. This is the place where God has placed his most prized and uh, precious creation in the midst of increase and in the midst of bursting forth. Now watch this. The name of the third river is Hydeco. Hide, excuse me. The name of the third river is Hydeco. It is the one which goes toward the east of Assyria. And now that uh, that river's name in the Hebrew is Rapid. So now we're in the midst of increased. We are in. Uh, uh, in the midst of y'all tell me what we in the midst of what are, what are we in the midst of bursting forth Gihon bur bur bursting forth increase bursting forth and Hideko which is rapid increase bursting forth rapid all of this in the midst or all of this where God has placed man. All of this, we're not done yet. There is a fourth river, and that river is the Euphrates, and it means fruitfulness. I want you guys to type, uh, help me out, help me out on tonight. Help me out on tonight. Help me out on tonight. Where 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 has God put man? He 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 put man in the Garden of Eden. And in that garden is four rivers. Increase. Bursting forth. Rapid and fruitfulness. Pishon, Gihon, Hittakel, and the Euphrates. See, now you, you, you can't tell me that God 
uh, God's intentions are not to bless his people. God's intentions uh, were not that people should live a blessed life, a fruitful life, a life of increase, a, 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 an abundant life. You guys know here at Vital, that's what we're pursuing after, the abundant life. We're pursuing to be victorious in the abundant life. Vital, victorious in the abundant life. Yeah, guarding your four rivers. Increase, bursting forth, rapid, and fruitfulness. This is the God that you serve. This is God that you serve. He wants... He, he, he wants an abundant life for you. If you if you ever lose track of what it is that God wants for his people, go back and look at what his first intentions were for man. And again, we don't believe that uh, God did not know that, you know, what was going to happen. And I believe that uh, this account is left on record so we can, so we ourselves can have an idea so we ourselves can can have a goal that 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 we should reach for and that goal that goal is what God intended for us in the beginning so again uh, we're in the midst of the garden God has placed man he has placed man woman is not here yet that still doesn't mean anything all right, I'm not. I'm just making the observation. I'm not trying to say anything about that, but I'm just making the observation. We haven't gotten the woman yet, and that's going to be very funny. Watch, <laughs> that's going to be very funny. But God has placed Adam uh, in in this garden. All right, um, He's placed Adam in the midst of increase. He He's placed uh, Adam in the midst of. Uh, bursting forth and uh, rapid uh, fruitfulness. All right. Y'all with me? 15 says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. And if you've been around the church any amount of time, You've heard uh, preachers, uh, if you've been the vital uh, any amount of time, uh, you may have heard me refer to this, uh, that uh, God gave man a job, right? <laughs> God gave him a house, but now he also gave, he gave man, uh, he, he gave man orders, right? He gave man uh, uh, responsibilities, right? Uh, he didn't just put Adam in the garden just for Adam just to enjoy it but Adam had to keep the garden up he had to tend the garden he had to keep the garden all right so again you have to remember God placed everything God created everything on this earth right so he created weeds so Adam he had to go and pull weeds he had to go and trim trees I'm, I'm just guessing but if he had to tend it and he had to keep it then you know he, he had to work in it all right and so God, he put Adam there in the garden to tend and to keep it. Adam, uh, what, Adam could not just, uh, just enjoy the garden, but he had to what? He had to work. All right. He had to work. He had to work. He had to work. Now, oftentimes we put that off on the man, but we're going to also see, and you guys already know where the woman, uh, she was a helper. And we're going to get into all that. We're going to try our best to unpack all that. Uh, within our hour um, but she 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 was a helper uh, so Adam wasn't just going wasn't the only one going to work Adam wasn't the only one tending it and keeping it uh, but uh, uh, Eve had to help Eve, Eve had to help and again we're gonna we're gonna unpack that more all right verse 16 says and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Now watch this. At God gave Adam the command that of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. All right. Now you can freely eat of every tree of the garden. But here is the caveat in verse 17. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. 
For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. All right. Now you 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 really have to look at this statement because again, this statement is a theological uh, proclamation, if you will. All right. And so God is letting Adam know, listen, if you eat of that tree of knowledge of good and evil, you're going to die. It is not my intention. Excuse me. It is not my intention for you to die. So I'm telling you, do not eat it. It's there, but do not eat it. Now, why, why would God do that? Why would God put uh, the tree in, 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 in Adam's reach in Adam's grasp. I know that's what you're you're asking because I asked the same thing. Well, if you didn't uh, if you didn't want him to eat of it, then why why put him there? All right. Again, you have to I have to think about uh, God being all knowing. All right. And knowing that uh, uh, what was going to take take place later. And I believe that this is all working for uh, for the good, right? It's all working out for our good. We know that it's all working out. It's all working out. It's all working out. It's all working out for for our good. But nonetheless, that may be a question for you to ask God when you get to heaven. When I get to heaven, I'm not. I'm really not going to worry about it. But you can ask him if you want, but our Bible teaches us that uh, he put him, he 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 put it in his reach, he put it in his grasp, uh, but he let him know, listen, don't eat of it, right? Don't 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 eat of it, because in that day uh, you shall surely die. And we understand that this was um, uh, it talked about the spiritual death, right? And it also talk, uh, talks about a physical death because we, again, we see that Adam, he was a, uh, he became a living, a living soul. Uh, and later on in the Bible, we see where, how man's life, uh, how man's life was, was shortened. Uh, but uh, because Adam ate of uh, the tree it brought uh, it brought about a curse it brought about the curse of uh, the curse of sin it brought about the curse of death uh, so much that that we go through right so much that we go through because of this flesh because of that one decision uh, that Adam made but nonetheless God planted the tree but he told Adam don't eat don't eat of the tree. And another reason I believe that uh, for that is because God, he uh, he wants to be in relationship with us without, if you will, our, our arms being twisted. Right. He wants to be in relationship with those that want to be in uh, relationship with him or let me let me re, re, rephrase that he wants to be in relationship with with everyone but he does not force himself upon everyone right uh, he he's he's not a forceful God he wants you to make the decision to be in relationship with him because what he first he first loved us uh, he made man to be uh, a free will uh, agent in the earth, right? He gave us a free will, right? We don't we don't see where God was controlling Adam's every every move, right? We don't see where God was controlling Adam's every thoughts, and we're going to even get into that when he started naming uh, the animals. God is not in control, right? But God put Adam in control. So again. Just to show that level of free will uh, uh, that God wanted for us. All right, let's look at verse number 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. All right, so 
made the garden, put the man in the midst of the garden, in the midst of uh, increase, in the midst of bursting forth rapid and fruitfulness, uh, told man that he was to tend and to keep the garden. Uh, told man that he can eat of every tree, right? Again, that that vegetarian type diet uh, that you can you can freely eat of every tree, but don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, it's funny, uh, but it may be a true statement that you are what you eat, right? You are uh, what you eat, or what you eat uh, it, it, it manifests itself. Uh, in particular ways and so there was a certain manifestation that God did not want to come forth <laughs> but anyway so he so here is Adam Adam is there and so now everything is made he's seeing Adam uh, tending and keeping keeping the garden and eating and things of that nature and God says to himself you know what I, I have to I have to make Adam a suitable a suitable mate that is comparable to him now, here's the funny thing. Verse number 19. In verse number 18, God says, I need to make him a helper that's comparable to him. But in verse number 19 says, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Now, God doesn't want to make him a comparable helper. Uh, but instead of bringing Eve to Adam at this time, God is bringing Adam animals. Uh, I'll just say it like this. There's really no way. Adam had enough sense to say, yeah, I see these animals, but... Uh, neither one of them floats my boat but uh, hey it, it may be a little controversial but it is what it is this is just the observation in, in the Bible if Adam had enough sense uh, that the the animals were not good for him to be in relationship uh, we should be in that uh, have that same mindset and so we can just even just see the deterioration and uh, the, the, the corruption of mind and spirit uh, even for the day and time uh, that, that we're living in alright the day and time that, that we're living in watch this verse 20 says so Adam gave names to all cattle to the birds of the air and to every beast of the field but for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Okay, Adam had sense. Then the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm skipping. Verse 21 says, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he what? He slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this now, excuse me, this is now bone of my, what? Bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman or woman. Because she was taken out of man. So God put Adam to sleep. God formed uh, surgery on Adam. And God took out a rib from Adam. And from that rib, God made woman. All right? God made, God made woman or woman or whoa, man. <laughs> I've heard other preachers say it like that uh, but uh, here we see God's even God's intention for uh, the marital relationship and God could have took any bone 
but he took the rib. He he took a bone from out of Adam's side to show uh, the equality, to show the equalness. God, he could have took a bone out of uh, Adam's foot, but I believe that God did not want uh, the idea to be made that Adam was to have uh, uh, to be a tyrant, if you will, over woman. But again, he took it from his side. He took the rib. He made the woman from his side. Uh, he didn't take a bone out of, of his head to show that the woman uh, was to be a tyrant uh, over, over man, but he took it from uh, from his side to show uh, the equalness, to show how he viewed man and woman, even though uh, they they are two different uh, two different sexes, if you will. Um, even though they are two two different section uh, sexes, and even though they have different function, but they are comparable uh, to one another. Uh, uh, they make it work, all right. Uh, that that should be a testament even to married couples how we're to be comparable uh, for one for one another. And now you guys know Pastor Benny's uh, Pastor Benny's stance, and I don't mean it to be a stance of uh, to be chauvinistic or anything like that, but uh, it's really for the man to take pride, uh, you know, in his position as far as as leadership, uh, we get a lot of that today. Uh, men don't take pride in uh, uh, God calling them to lead, not to be a tyrant, all right, not to look down on the wife, not not to uh, uh, you know talk down to the wife or anything like that, but to lead. To to uh, you guys know how I like to say you know. God is calling man to present the blessings of the Lord. I can imagine when uh, God, and let me switch over to the chat because I know some of y'all ladies might want to say something. <laughs> so uh, I can imagine when God took uh, Eve to Adam, that Adam, he grabbed his wife and he's loving on his wife and they're, they they're taking a stroll through the garden and he's, and he's showing her, you know, Hey, this is that kind of tree. And he kind of, sh he's kind of showboating and say, you know, yeah, that animal over that animal over there, I named him a giraffe and that animal over there, I named it an elephant and you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, but he's showing, he's presenting, uh, to her, to his wife the blessings of the Lord right and so I believe that wholeheartedly that that's what uh, that's what God has called men to do to present uh, the blessings of uh, of the Lord to his wife and uh, to his family to to take care of them and to uh, to share uh, to share to share God's intentions for the family now again uh, he took woman from the rib, the side, and again, this is that is not a message of uh, being chauvinistic or anything like that. Because again, the Bible shows us that he took woman from Adam's side to show that they were equal, right? They're equal in God's sight, and even though we might have different functions, uh, 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 we're equal. We're equal in God's sight. Uh, the Bible teaches us that. In Christ, there's neither male nor female. He doesn't, you know, look at, you know, because uh, uh, you're a woman or because, you know, you, you're you're a man that uh, God, he has any type, any type of preference, but he does not because you are, uh, you are his creation. And so uh, it was a, a literal thing when Adam said, you know what, God, this is bone of my bone. This is flesh of my of my flesh. It, it wasn't really anything poetic, but this was this was real deal. God, you put me to sleep, and you took out you took out one of my my ribs, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Verse twenty four, 
says, therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall what? Become one flesh. I believe that was Moses interjecting. He said, this is the reason. All this, we talk about this, this marriage union. This union that, that God has uh, created. What God has put together. Let no one, let no one take it apart. Right? You, you've become one flesh. You become one. How can you? How can you separate your flesh? I can't. Uh, don't try to remove a rib from me now. It hurts. All right. Uh, don't don't try to remove an arm. Don't try to remove a leg. It hurts. But God has called us married couples. Those desiring women. Uh, desiring to be married Men desiring uh, to be married Understand what you're getting into Understand what God is, is expecting And we can go through Throughout the whole word of God uh, But Here's one example for us Of what, what it was that, that God was expecting Bone of my bone Flesh of my flesh They become, they become one flesh I told you it was going to be funny how God brought about uh, Adam's wife. Uh, Moses is writing out this story. I think Moses is probably trying to be a little funny. But he's writing out this story uh, as uh, the Holy Spirit is giving him inspiration. As God is giving him inspiration. Uh, you, guys do, you guys do know from, uh, from last week's Bible study that the Bible teaches us that uh, the Holy Spirit was already on the scene. Uh, you guys do remember that, right? So here Moses is writing the story uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he gets to the part to where God wants to make uh, Adam a comparable um, helper. God wants to make uh, Adam a, uh, a equal mate. One that fits him, one that suits him, uh, one that uh, one that is on his same intellectual level. All right, we're not on the same inter intellectual level um, as animals. I know some some ch some smart chimpanzees out there, some smart gorillas, and some smart apes out there, um, but they don't compare to to our intelligence and uh, no matter what uh, evolutionists tell you uh, we did not come from them all right they did not come from us uh, but uh, we came we came from God and when God made us uh, when God formed us uh, he formed us with functional bodies all right functional organs functional brains uh, but here Adam is And uh, he does not find a comparable He's scratching his head And he said you know I, 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 I don't find a mate for myself where's, where's my mate And God says I got you Puts Again he puts him to sleep Does uh, the surgery And brings about uh, Brings about This woman and verse number 25 says, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. All right? They were naked. Uh, whether they were fully naked or partially naked, they were naked, the man and his wife. And they were, uh, they were not ashamed. And, you know, we can even stick a pen in that and, 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 and talk about uh, just vulnerabilities uh, that we may find ourselves in. And but because Adam and Eve were in a place to where God had placed them, uh, they were not ashamed about uh, their nakedness because this was a state. This was a situation, if you will, 
that God had placed that God had placed them in. Yeah, I know uh, they had not eaten of uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I get that. I understand. But this, uh, th th there's something there. There's something to be said about them both being naked and not uh, not being uh, ashamed, other than uh, them not eating of the knowledge of, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So again, life in the garden. God created the garden. He placed man in it. Placed man in the midst of that garden. Increase. Uh, bursting forth. Rapid. Fruitfulness. This is where God places man. This is where God places woman this is where God placed Adam this is where God placed Eve again this is where God places his children this is what God wants for his children he places them uh, in the garden of Eden he places them uh, uh, in the midst of a productive uh, situation with the how the young people say today <laughs> there everything's good and that's what God wants for your life that's what God wants for uh, for my life that's what God wants for uh, your family's life he he placed uh, Adam he placed Eve in uh, the midst of wholeness of fruitfulness uh, they have dominion. They they have power. They they have authority. Uh, just the blessings of the Lord, just overtaking them. That's what God wants. What does God want for your life? Look at the creation story. God wants His people to be blessed. There's no doubt about it. Excuse me. There's no doubt about it. Look at his first intentions for his prized creation. Look at the situation that, that he has placed them in. He intended for long life. He intended for them to have long life. He intended them to, to have a joyous life. Not to be alone. But we thank God that we have the word of God that we can look back and, 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 and we can draw uh, inspiration from. Oftentimes we, we kind of get in those mental slumps and just feel like, you know, life is just going nowhere. No, your life is going somewhere. Go, go, go read Genesis chapter number two. Go read Genesis chapter number one. Just, just start, just start at the beginning. Just start at the beginning of, of, of your Bible and see that God has called you to be blessed. He has decreed in the earth. He has decreed in the heavens for you to be blessed. For increase to come to your life. For you to have dominion. For you to have power. And authority. This is the God that we serve. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Who wouldn't? I'll serve a God like this all day. Every day. Because I know that his intentions for me. His thoughts for me. They're not thoughts of evil. But just like the situation in the garden. It's peacefulness. Increase. This is what God wants for you. This is what God wants for his people. 
Yes, he blessed man from the very beginning. From the very beginning, you were blessed. Somebody needs to hear that on tonight. Somebody has to know that. Somebody has to believe that on tonight. That from the very beginning, God wants you. God wanted you. He still desires for you to be blessed. He still desires to bless your life. He still desires to bring wholeness and, and, and completeness to your life. We're going to go through, uh, we're going to go through uh, Genesis. We're going to continue to go through Gen Genesis. We're going to continue to go through Genesis uh, for these Bible studies. And uh, again, although they're going to be contextual studies, we're going to see, we, we, we're going we're gonna to see uh, just how uh, God cares for man and how he cares for you. And his initial plan uh, for man, you can have that. We can have that. We can still have that. We can still have that. We can still have that. All right. It's 8.30. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. God bless you to everyone who's, who's stuck in here with us. Please, if you have not, uh, subscribe to the channel. So, and when you subscribe, make sure you hit the uh, bell notification icon so you can be alerted uh, when we go live. Uh, please like or dislike the video, but share it either way. And uh, again, we're going to continue to... Uh, study the book of Genesis and next week we're going to get into chapter number three which is again a very very interesting chapter where we're going to talk about uh, the fall of man we're going to uh, talk about how Satan uh, made his way and uh, we're going to uh, dig deep into uh, theology and uh, we're going to look at how we uh, how we ended up where we are now where society is now where uh, creation is now so I pray that you guys are as excited as I am uh, for uh, this Bible study uh, what about uh, that is, and this is also on Android. I don't know if it's, um, if it is on iOS, but it's, um, the Bible software is Olive Tree. Again, you guys know I'm, I'm very, uh, I love technology. So, you know, my, <laughs> all my notes and it's, it's a, let me get back to it. It's a very good, very good software. Uh, you can download is they the, the library is very extensive uh, it's very very good so if if you are serious about taking uh, your studies uh, to the next level which I encourage every child of God to do uh, this is a good it's a is a good software again you can um, you can buy um, you can buy Bibles, commentaries. Uh, oh, I want to show you guys the map. That's what I want to show you. That's what I want to show you. I hope you guys can see this. So here's here's a map. Let me make sure, and it'll switch switch over for you guys here shortly but here's a map and I want to show you guys this uh, because a lot of the scholars um, <clears throat> uh, they believe that the Garden of Eden uh, could
could possibly have been uh, in this in this in this region, um, this region of of Iraq. Um, and again, uh, you know, when a lot of people uh, they say that you know Christianity, uh, you know, it's a, a it's a white man's religion and things of that nature. And I tell you, no, um, it definitely origi originated. Um, from the Middle East, but uh, this Bible software is really good because you can buy maps and things of that nature. Um, all right, so I'm not an affiliate of Olive Tree. I won't get any money if you download it. So I'll just I'll just stop there and I'll just say, hey, it's a it's a really good software to get. So. Um, so, anyway, I pray that you guys, uh, you guys have been blessed uh, uh, from the Bible study. I encourage you guys to go back and read it for, uh, read it for yourselves, uh, study it for yourselves, uh, give God an opportunity uh, to, to speak expressly to you uh, while you are reading and studying and rightly dividing the word of God. And again, I want to thank you guys so much for, uh, for joining us. Uh, for this Bible study. Again, if you have not, please subscribe, like, and share the stream. Uh, let someone else be blessed um, by uh, the Bible study. And uh, we, if the Lord shall bless, we will be back here uh, next, next week, Tuesday at 7.30. Um, if you guys have any, uh, any prayer requests, you can drop them in the chat. And we will uh, believe God for you, believe God with you. Uh, if not, uh, feel free to uh, to email us, uh, prayer at myvitalchurch.org or head over to the website, myvitalchurch.org and um, submit your prayer request. Submit your prayer request online. Again, so we can pray with you and pray for you. All right. Again, I pray to God that uh, you have been blessed uh, by the Bible study. We're going to go ahead and get out of here so you guys can enjoy the rest of your evening and get ready for your day on tomorrow. So uh, as always, if you stay in God, you will stay in control. Father God, we love you. We bless you. We give you all glory, honor and praise. God, we thank you for this awesome opportunity of being with your people of like mind and like faith. God, we thank you now uh, just for your blessings, God, just overtaking them, God, overshadowing uh, their lives, just taking up uh, room in their lives that they won't have room enough to receive. God, we thank you that there's no lack, there's no slack. Uh, we are walking in your overflow and living in your abundance. Father, we love you and we bless you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you too, Minister Shirley. God bless you. God bless you. All right, y'all. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. Y'all be blessed. Have a good one. Love you much. Bye-bye.